The number of individuals going hungry in the world has reached 1 billion in 2009. In the Philippines, more and more families are also experiencing hunger and are living below the poverty line. The country continues to face the challenge of ensuring decent and productive work. Despite economic growth, vulnerable employment remains of grave concern as people take whatever work is available in order to survive. The need to focus on how to achieve economic growth through decent and productive work is crucial for individuals to lift themselves out of poverty. Alongside extreme poverty are issues of hunger and malnutrition. Studies in 2005 showed that one out of four Filipino children are underweight or stunted, while one out of 20 children die due to malnutrition. As terrible as these consequences of malnutrition are, its most irreversible damage starts in the womb and in the first two years of a child's life. Over the past decades, more and more women are becoming more active in the labor force, in the labor market. More and more women are seeking jobs, and not just jobs, but they're looking for sustainable income and economic activities. Most women, after giving birth, feel the pressure of returning to their jobs due to financial reasons and concern for their job security. As a result, they are forced to give up exclusively breastfeeding their children up to six months and continued breastfeeding up to two years and beyond, depriving them of nutrition critical to their proper growth and development. Exclusively breastfed infants, by, and by exclusive breastfeeding we mean those that are given only breast milk, only breast milk, not even water in the first six months of life, they are 14 times more likely to survive rather than to die if they were given artificial formula. The IQ, the intelligence quotient of breastfed children are higher. When they grow up, they are also less likely to have diabetes, hypertension, um, heart disease. They are less likely to be obese. Bali lahat ng mga anak ko lahat sila mula sa panganay ang sa kanya puro breastfeed talaga ako hindi sila sakitin kung sa pag ano ng mga bata yung ano nila mental ano nila development mataas yung ano nila kasi sa school totoo lang yung mga anak ko minsan ko lang sila natuturuan pero alam nila madali silang matuto well, one of the major things na iniisip ko is the cost of the formula also. So, that's big savings for me if I um, breastfeed. I don't have to spend that money on formula because it's available naman through me. The economic benefits of exclusive breastfeeding and appropriate complementary feeding impacts from the mother up to the companies. At the individual level, the mother she and her child uh, would have uh, lower health care costs. The mother at the workplace, she incurs less absenteeism, fewer uh, medical leaves, and she will not take cash advances for unnecessary health care costs uh, incurred because her baby is sick. Spearheading the efforts to promote exclusive breastfeeding and continued breastfeeding in the workplace is the International Labor Organization, or ILO. ILO is a specialized agency of the United Nations that works on promoting decent work and productive employment to aid in poverty alleviation efforts of its member countries, such as the Philippines. Our role is really to look at labor issues, to look at it through poverty alleviation, growth, development from the labor component. The only asset that many people have is their labor. So we approach the problem through the ILO looking at how we can have an impact on poverty alleviation by working with governments and the social partners and improving the lives and the well-being of those individuals within society, no matter what the level. But we want to focus on the poor and we do it through looking at it through the lens of labor issues. The Decent Work Agenda is the framework of the ILO in identifying major priorities and programs to support its partners globally. 
It also guides its partners in the formulation of strategies that address issues of poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. Central to decent work is maternity protection. Women have issues that need to be addressed, like men in the workplace. So it's very important in the case of maternity protection or family protection, these issues, that we address the concerns of women. Because we have a family welfare program, which has 10 elements. Part of that is the exclusive breastfeeding. We actually encourage um, employers to set up even just a small nook, or uh, which is a little private, for the for the mothers to express their milk and then allow them to use the refrigerator of the company. We at the Employers Confederation of the Philippines believe in the interconnection among employees' health, their productivity, and work-life balance. Consistent with this belief, ECOP has been championing various workplace initiatives to improve the work and life balance of employees. Among the many trusts of ECOP, is the promotion of workplace maternal and child health care program. Well, as much as possible, we try to encourage our members to include exclusive breastfeedings as one of the main provisions of their collective bargaining agreements. Now, CBAs, uh, this is a legal document between management and workers which outlines all the benefits that they, they are supposed to get. In 2009, the Millennium Development Goal funded joint program on ensuring food security and nutrition for children 0 to 24 months was launched in the Philippines with support from the government of Spain. The joint program with its key implementing partners from the Philippine government and social partners, UNICEF, World Health Organization, World Food Program, Food and Agriculture Organization, and the ILO seeks to contribute in the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals on ending extreme poverty, hunger, and reducing child mortality rate. Ang una naming bibigyan or target, i-target na area ay yung mga areas na mataas yung maternal mortality at infant mortality. So we targeted Sambuanga, Naga, at saka Iloilo. And after these three areas, Iikot kami sa mga ano na yan, sa mga different regions na maraming mga workers na babae. Sa napakaraming babaeng nagtatrabaho ngayon, kung maipasok yung breastfeeding program, eh makakatulong kami sa economic side ng, ng mga workers. With the passage of the Expanded Breastfeeding Promotion Act of 2009, this law mandates companies, uh, establishments to set up lactation stations, provide an additional 40-minute break for working mothers to express their milks. We hope that uh, through that national legislation, we will also be able to further promote other essential elements of maternity protection in the Philippines. Ano, huwag po pasalamat lang ako sa kanila kasi may programang gano'n na hindi kami sinasantabi yung mga nanya nagbe-breastfeed. Uh, there are a lot of things to be done. Everybody should have to take part of advocating in the local government to really have an institutionalized way of addressing and encouraging really the productive mothers, those mothers really to use or to, to breastfeed their children. The ILO promotes decent work to help people all over the world achieve their aspirations in their working lives and through the promotion of exclusive breastfeeding and continued breastfeeding in the workplace. ILO, with partners from the joint program, is taking significant steps in addressing poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. These are all intertwined. So you cannot achieve one Millennium Development Goal without working on all the other seven. We are entering this from how do we make societies that work more decent productive to achieve poverty alleviation, to improve education, to improve child health, maternal health. These are all linked. And if we think beyond just that one workplace, and again, we're developing a healthy labor force. And as we learn and develop, we will create a, a more, even more productive labor force for generations to come.